Welcome back to the Lack Factor. We are exploring San Francisco. Streets, sweets, and dairy-free treats. So I am at the Intercontinental Mark Hopkins Hotel in San Francisco. And this is the penthouse suite. It is pretty amazing. Let me show you around. I imagine the views are incredible from up here. Um, of course, San Francisco always has some fog. You have to plan for that. Sometimes it'll be crystal clear and sometimes you won't see almost nothing. So we are back at the front door of the suite. When you come in, right on the left, you have a coat closet and a powder room. Making a U-turn at the powder room, we would go down the hallway and come right into the primary suite. Beautiful, large room, as you can see. Plenty of space to lounge out, relax on the chair, look out the window again, hoping it's not too foggy, and uh, you'd be guaranteed a beautiful view from up here on the tallest floors of the hotel. I'm sure you're wondering, is that bed as, as comfortable as it looks? And I would say, heck yes, it was a great bed. Beautiful stand-up shower over here on the right and there's actually two heads from each wall that kind of give that rain water effect along with a large soaking tub and a double vanity. Amazing what one day can do. The fog is gone. Check out this view, huh? But even just as stunning. Let's take a look around this lobby. I don't know about you. I love, love, love historic hotels that just have so much history in them. So many things that have happened there and uh, just fantastic. One of the most famous parts of the hotel is the top of the mark. It is literally above our penthouse and it is a truly famous site, but we couldn't get up there. Uh, it only opens after 5 p.m. So I guess I'll just have to come back and check it out. I couldn't help but get enchanted with the history the original owner of the property, Mark Hopkins, started building a mansion and never lived to see it be completed. Uh, after his passing, the house was finally built and then sadly destroyed in the Great Earthquake of San Francisco. Uh, it was until years later that it was actually became a hotel and it became the meeting place of where the United Nations was first created. They also have some memorabilia of some old menus 
and they talk about a staff shortage back then in the 1930s and uh, I don't think I would have been able to get dairy-free food. Uh, makes me sad. So I'm happy I'm visiting today. Standing in front of the hotel on Knob Hill, you can't help but just be in awe of the city. San Francisco is just so beautiful and so romantic. Um, we ended up deciding not to have breakfast in the hotel but instead found a cute little spot down California Street on the corner of California and Larkin. And they just had some incredible food, great service. It was really fast to get seated, even though they were busy, um, but absolutely loved it.
Check it out, huh? Yeah. So this is Mere Woods. I'm in northern San Francisco, and these are the coastal redwood trees. They happen to be the tallest trees in the entire world. The coastal redwood is the tallest tree in the world, according to records. However, the actual tallest ones are a couple hours north of Mere Woods at Redwood Forest. Back in San Francisco at the Mona Lisa Italian restaurant, had the most amazing grilled octopus and squid ink pasta paella. Dairy free naturally, they don't use it in these dishes. Food was incredible. Let's get back on a cable car because I just love them.
So where's the Tony Bennett statue? 
it is in front of the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. And oh yeah, that's where we're staying tonight. It's actually across the street from the Intercontinental Mark Hopkins where we were last night. Check out this lobby. The amount of history between these two hotels is just amazing. And of course it doesn't hurt that it's right on the cable car line, right on California Street. So you can go up and down all day long like I did. And of course connect to the other lines as well, get all around the city. But let's check out this property. It is quite a beauty. As I walk around this lobby, I can't help but remind myself of all the famous people that have walked through here. Just like last night when I was across the street at the Mark Hopkins, um, as you saw on the wall over there, the founding of the United Nations was literally in that hotel. So the amount of dignitaries and famous people that have walked up these stairs, congregated in this lobby, got married in these ballrooms, is just amazing. So of course some of those famous people, one of which would include Tony Bennett. So the statue outside as well as all of the memorabilia inside the hotel reminds us that the first time he ever sang his famous song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, he did it inside the Fairmont Hotel. Uh, he has also come back several times throughout history and sang it again for several events in the city. So it's pretty cool to check out all of the uh, historical items that they have inside the lobby. I'm sure you're wondering about my room. The room here is beautifully equipped. Nice comfy bed. Uh, a little on the small side, gotta say, but it was a standard room. So the bathroom was also a little bit tight. And I wasn't crazy about the toiletries being fixated on the wall. Um, some of them are actually even empty. So, but it was very, very comfortable. Nice night, nice quiet room. Um, and I uh, had a great sleep. Breakfast time! A beautiful, beautiful cafe. Uh, the entire menu is a la carte, but I was able to get my eggs and bacon and put in my request for dairy-free, which they were happy to accommodate. All right, it's official. I fell in love with these cable cars. <laughs> I just absolutely love riding them around the city. If you've never been on one, I totally, totally recommend it. It's just the coolest thing because it doesn't actually use electricity on the car itself. It runs off of cables which run completely underground um, so there is no emissions in the street whatsoever. But I was curious as to how that all works underground. So we're going to go check out the Cable Car Museum and see if we can get some more answers. It is completely free to go in. It is open from 10 to 5 every day, and I totally recommend checking it out. I think it was a great place. They had some antique cable cars that you could look at, take some pictures of. Uh, it's amazing to look at how it was 120 years ago versus now. They're actually celebrating, Muni is celebrating 150 year anniversary. Um, and it was wild to learn that some of the first cable cars, people were so afraid when they were going down the hill that nobody wanted to ride them. And the initial first time there was ever a cable car going down a hill, they actually had to pay people to get on because they were afraid um, that they were not going to be able to break and just fly down the hill. Um, and sadly, over time, uh, Frida here is one of the people who is was committed to keeping cable cars alive in San Francisco because there's been many times when they've fallen into disrepair 
they've taken some of the lines down and then they put them back up. So thank you to all those people who did that. This here is the heart, kind of like the engine that literally moves all the cables through the city all day long. So these ones here are street cars and I've been seeing this car a few times today and I'm like, I love the color. I want to ride on it so bad. I unfortunately did not get the chance, but I got the next best thing. I have another streetcar that I got to go on. I just find that the modes of transport here are just incredible. They're all old, historic cars that have been refurbished and they're still put back into service, like this one that is from Mexico. Stumbled onto Espectis Churrascaria, a Brazilian steakhouse. Of course, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm going in and getting my barbecue. But I walked into this buffet, and this buffet just blew me away. First of all, they had everything labeled as to what had dairy and what didn't. Um, and of course, other allergens. And they had the most delicious seafood paella that I have had in a really long time. And let me tell you, I had so much of it that I barely even had room for meats. <laughs> Um, had uh, some great juices and a very good spot but I gotta say a um, couple of things that it was a little bit pricey number one and number two would be about this healthy San Francisco surcharge apparently the city passed an ordinance that requires employers to pay for health insurance for their employees and it seems as though uh, businesses in turn have passed this charge onto the customers so I had to pay an additional $15 on top of my bill. Just um, be aware of this when you go out to eat in San Francisco that you will have to pay this additional tax. I also need to talk quickly about the homelessness and drug use problem in San Francisco. I would never film such things um, out of the privacy and decency of everybody, but my thoughts, my love, and my prayers go out to everybody who has been impacted by this. And I truly hope that there is some help and resolution fast. For tourists that are gonna visit the area, I show City Hall to remind you to avoid this area at nighttime especially.
clothes. <laughs> Plenty of space. All right, here's the BART station at Embarcadero. We are at our next hotel, which is the Hyatt Regency Embarcadero. The location literally could not be better. This is the beginning of the California Line cable car ride. And check out the inside of this place, huh? What a place. Wow. I was like blown away when I walked in the first time. Uh, of course, we're going to get some breakfast in here, right? Uh, a little bit pricey, $36 a person for breakfast. Um, check out this bell stand. You ever seen a bell stand like that? Full of bells. <laughs> and uh, I'm just still in awe of the lobby. Wow. Amazing, right? Pretty cool. I've even heard some movies were filmed here. Do you know which ones they were? So having breakfast at the largest lobby in the entire world. I had no idea about that, actually. I checked it up. Guinness Book of Records says it's true. Uh, at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in San Francisco on the Embarcadero Center. Pretty cool place. And in here, we are at the Empire uh, Restaurant, or Empire Buffet, I think they call it. And they have tons and tons of dairy-free options for food. So we got some bacon, we have some chicken sausage, apple chicken sausage, smashed potatoes, all marks dairy free and labeled, and of course some oatmeal. And I know you're wondering, where are my eggs? So they have scrambled eggs on the buffet that I cannot have, unfortunately, but not to worry, they're making me fresh eggs dairy free in the back. Two eggs over easy, that's how I like it. So completely buffet style, you come up and grab whatever looks great to you. Everything was completely labeled and I was very, very happy that they're even labeled dairy-free, vegan, gluten-free, um, some really great options. And then like I said about the eggs, if you weren't able to eat what was on the buffet, you could ask them to make them special, which was great. Even almond milk for the lattes. A comfortable and quiet suite up on the 16th floor it was very nice best part of the suite had to be waking up to this view that is the bay bridge right there and the sunrise coming right up over it was just absolutely stunning of course the other direction you would um, see the golden gate but this faces the bay bridge and it was amazing it's also the ferry terminal building down there and then where my room was i had a direct view of the beginning of the Muni Heritage Weekend, right down in that park, right down in there. So uh, I saw them bringing in the buses and everything nice and early, and I said, gee, let me hop on down there. The fun is about to start. Let's go down and check it out. What do you think? Check this out, huh? They call this the Gremlin. It dates back to 1969. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look at the prices back then.
This streetcar comes all the way from Milan, Italy. I am beyond grateful to have taken part in such an event like this. And thank you so much to all the wonderful folks that painstakingly take care of all this equipment and give us the opportunity to ride on it, to touch it, to feel it, and to admire it and uh, to help us journey back to the past. Yeah, it's just incredible. It only happens once a year, and this was actually the first time that they did a two-day event since 2019, which was pretty symbolic. So um, if you ever get the chance, the once a year event, the Muni Heritage Weekend, I totally think it's worth it. You have to come check it out. Uh, it's full of smiles, full of, uh, you know, wild rides and uh, you'll love it trust me so i find myself now down at fisherman's wharf and there is so much to see and explore here i'm gonna start at this place budin and i hope i pronounce that right i asked like three employees how to say it budin that's what they told me so this is a french bakery cafe and they've been in San Francisco since 1849 where they are literally world famous with crafting the sourdough recipe that is famous from San Francisco and they churn out so many items from this sourdough uh, mother load kind of recipe uh, there's tons of sweets in here unfortunately all of them had milk um, they have these really cool baskets that run bread all around the place. Um, let me know if you think it is actually real bread. I don't think it is. I think it's just decoration. But it is pretty cool because it comes back and forth from the production facility which is on there. Um, again, most of everything on the menu, sadly, is pretty much off limits. Um, either it has butter or milk in it. Uh, there were not that many options that I could find here. Um, however, the bread does not have any dairy, so we're going to try some bread in a second. But uh, just check this place out, it is bustling with customers the whole time I was there, and I imagine all the time. They have a really cool gift shop where you can look and buy all kinds of goodies, um, you know, make up a goodie bag for somebody back home or even for yourself, uh, aprons, all kinds of stuff. And again, I, you can get just mesmerized watching this bread move back and forth from the production area to over here in the restaurant. Um, this little cafe where you can sit down and eat and um, you can watch them cook the bread. Uh, it's just a really, really cool place. Very iconic and uh, really a San Francisco hotspot. Bakery. Uh, it's a sourdough home of San Francisco where they have their mother load of uh, starter dough, which they've had for many, many years, uh, since 1849. Now, sadly, there is honestly not a lot of non dairy options. However, sourdough bread is dairy free. I almost dropped it on the floor. I was kind of nervous because I really want to try it. Look at this, it's incredible. It uh, should be nice and crunchy, but yet yeah, inside, hopefully, a little bit fluffy. Look at that, huh? They bake it right on site here, and uh, they sell it over in here. It's a whole full service thing. Tons of sandwiches, tons of bakery items, but again, almost everything has milk. Uh, but we did score this really cool pumpkin oat latte, and right on time for the season because it is fall and uh, it's a little chilly, it's about 60 out with the wind, so uh, sourdough, I don't know if I'm gonna dunk it, but sourdough with some pumpkin latte, oat milk, and uh, we're pretty much all set.
much fun. Oh my goodness, here we go. Coming down the hill. We did it. We arrived at Ghirardelli Square just in time for the sunset. Aren't those beautiful views? So I have to admit I was a little bit afraid to go down here. Uh, 
Only because I'd heard some stories that there would be nothing for us. And that it would just be full of delicious chocolates and it would be a complete tease. So I have to say, first of all, the, the whole complex is amazing. There's new restaurants, there's tons of other gift shops, um, and then the chocolate experience itself is just a beautiful place. Tons of tables you can come in, sit around. Um, looking around the store, I did find some non-dairy baking chocolate chips, and uh, <laughs> I kept looking and looking and looking. And then of course, finally on the menu, my goodness, I saw uh, some non-dairy ice cream. Alright, check out this situation. So, as you know, I scoured the menu, looking all around, and I started actually on the back, looking through everything, only to find down the bottom that there was a create your own and the scoop flavors actually offered non-dairy and then there was some toppings that were non-dairy so I was like oh let me go make my own sundae but then they were nice enough to point out to me that I should have looked on the front and saw that there's a new non-dairy hot fudge sundae so it's actually served with uh, non-dairy ice cream I'm trying to think about it it's vanilla and coconut, the ice cream. And then there's almond uh, whipped cream with some nuts and non-dairy chocolate. And uh, it tastes pretty fantastic. All right, so now I can think straight. I was so excited when it arrived, I couldn't even think straight. I can't tell you the last time I've had fudge, you know, hot fudge that was dairy free. We're pretty excited about it and it's pretty delicious. So all together, everything with the fudge, the ice cream, the whipped cream, the nuts and the cherry, it, it makes it so that it's rich and you get the chocolatey flavor that Ghirardelli should have. But it's not too much chocolate. With the ice cream it kind of mellows it down and it is uh, overall a pretty stellar dessert. I have to say, it even probably adds up to a good dairy one. I mean, the flavors are just awesome. Very, very delicious.
my same driver four hours ago. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I tried out another line and then another one and then now I'm heading back down again. <laughs> oh, yeah? Hopefully you get to relax tonight. There you go. Yeah, we went on the, uh, what's it called? The boat? Oh, yeah. yeah, that thing was a trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Liverpool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you catch it by the ferry Yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah, it was a hard one to catch. It was a red one. I guess they got two different ones. This one's painted red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Life Factor, until our next episode of Streets, Sweets, and Dairy-Free Treats, I'd like to thank you again so much for watching and for helping to make this possible. Also, a huge shout out to all the wonderful folks in San Francisco that also made this trip possible. Uh, have a great one, and we'll see you in the next one.